So in essence, this is a, an emergency uh, piece of equipment. It's to be used when you have run out of ventilators. Um, it is not an everyday piece of kit that makes something better that is done every day in the ICU. So there's a different kind of business plan. This is an emergency response. There was a lot of discussion early on in the pandemic in uh, March. I can ventilate two or three people on a ventilator. And it sounds easy. You just double or triple the amount of volume that you want to give. But if the two of us are on a ventilator and your lung is quite stiff and my lung about the same size is quite compliant or flexible, then I will get a lot more of the air and you will get a lot less. You will be underventilated, I will be overventilated, and neither of us will do well. And we looked at the debate on the internet and other places and we said, actually, there's a better way. Instead of having everybody breathe together, we breathe, we don't breathe. Instead, you breathe, then I breathe, then you breathe again, then I breathe again. And that's essentially what this is. So instead of trying to be clever about the patients in ways that don't work, let's use a little bit of clever technology. And that's what you can hear behind me, which is this active valve. So I can double the respiratory rate of the ventilator. And simply I can arrange for the air to go one way towards you first, and then the next breath to go towards me. And all it requires is a little motor and a little sensor. The whole ethos of the design has been focused on open source and accessibility, so that means that a lot of the design decisions have been made more complex by making the design itself more simple. So designing it such that it can be made um, in developing countries, for example, means that it's much more difficult to design it because you can't just say, oh, go down to Bunnings and buy this part, for example. So the vast majority of the design is 3D printed. So for example, we can see here, this is um, one of the latest designs. And so there's only really four discrete parts to the valve itself. So at the end of the day, it's just quite a simple valve that just flicks back and forth um, as controlled by a motor, obviously, and directs air down one way or the other. The fact that we ventilate lungs separately, so in series, you breathe and I breathe and you breathe, um, this is basically allowing us to customize the ventilation to each patient without actually doing anything quite different than we normally do. So we're using just simple parts to enable that. You have the opportunity for other people to pick up and improve that design um, and augment what we've done here. Mm -hmm.